magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt God's name forever. Welcome into the house of the Lord on this Easter Sunday morning. We are glad that you have decided to worship with us, that God has called you to be with us on this Sunday morning. He is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Eternal God, we thank you for your amazing grace. We thank you for second chance opportunities you give us, God. We know that with grace comes mercy. And on this Resurrection Sunday, we are grateful that those inseparable twins have met us at this portion of our service. Thank you for reminding us it's only through death that we have life. And thank you for being the example through your son that all things are possible to those that believe. God, may the words of my mouth and the continued meditation of all of our hearts be pleasing and acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, our strength and our most blessed Redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. To God be the glory. Great things God has done. Happy Easter. Happy Resurrection Day. Uh, to those who are watching for the first time, as Pastor Lanson has already greeted you, we know that it's not by accident, it's not by coincidence, but it's God's providence that you would join us for this Easter service. To our musicians, our technicians, to those in the house here making this service possible, I am be grateful. 
And to those who have prayed for this Resurrection Sunday, I'm very appreciative. Um, it is a joy to stand before you on this Sunday morning, and we do ask uh, that as the words have been shared in scripture as well in song, that you will leave with a blessing to be a blessing to others. Today, my friends, I'm going to ask that you would turn in your Bibles to a different kind of Easter text, but it will tie into the one, Matthew 28, that Pastor Lanson has already read. But I want to go a couple of chapters early to Matthew chapter 26. I would read to you for your hearing verse 47 through 50 from an NIV translation of the word. For the Bible says, and while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. With him was a large crowd armed with swords and clubs, sent from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had arranged a signal with them. The one I kiss is the man, arrest him. Going at once to Jesus, Judas said, Greetings, Rabbi, and kissed him. Jesus replied, Friend, do what you came to do. Then the men stepped forward, seized Jesus, and arrested him. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I want to call your attention to verse 50 of this pericope, for it says to us, Then Jesus replied, Friends, do what you came for. Then the men stepped forward, seized Jesus, and arrested him. And with the aid of the Holy Spirit on this Easter Sunday, I want to lift up this text and for a brief moment preach on our subject, It's Necessary. It's Necessary. From betrayal to resurrection, it's necessary. My friends, I have come to the conclusion that the older I get and the more life experiences I encounter, I have learned, y'all, that things don't happen by accident and things don't occur by coincidence but many things come about by God's providence and that makes it necessary let me see if I can say it this way I've learned church that when situations come our way and when certain people cross our path rest be assured it's not because of luck and it's not because of chance but it is a, has a whole lot to do with the providence of God, and that makes it necessary. And hear me when I say necessary, for I'm implying the occurrences or the situations had to happen in order to get our attention and put us in the place where we are right now necessary. When, when I say necessary, I'm inferring to the lessons we've learned and, and the stuff we've experienced that happens to be a part of the master's plan for our lives. And those events, y'all, are necessary. And could it be that I'm looking at an example right now, I'm speaking to a survivor of this morning who has a story to tell and a new life to live because something in your past interrupted your presence and redirected your future. Why? Because it was necessary. Can you just say necessary? And, and, and I want you to be honest with me this morning. I, I want you to tell the truth and shame the devil because uh, you didn't get to the word that you in right now until the world started sucking the life out of you. And in order for you to get your life back, you found it necessary to come to the Lord. You, 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 you did not start to clean up your act until your children started imitating your mess. And it was only when you declared it was necessary to make some changes to your character. You didn't stop lying until you got caught. You didn't stop cheating until you got busted. You didn't stop stealing until you got arrested. And you didn't start studying until you flunked the course. 
You dodged child support. You avoided paying bills. You drove without insurance. You had unexpected, unexpired uh, expired tax. You had bootleg cable. You wouldn't take your medicine. You wouldn't eat right. You wouldn't exercise. You wouldn't call your mama. You wouldn't come home at night. You wouldn't take birth control. You wouldn't take a bath. You wouldn't get a job. You wouldn't save money. You were on your way to hell in a handbasket until the powerful hand of the divine plan reached down from heaven, buffed you upside your knucklehead, shook some sense into your brain, made you check yourself before you wreck yourself. Why? Because it was necessary. It's necessary, necessary. And I, I don't want you to get all puffy and start writing me letters for I'm not saying that you wanted it to happen, but because it did happen, you're a better person. You ought to say amen right there. I, I, I'm not saying, y'all, that you wanted to go through the trouble, but because you went through that trouble, you now have a testimony. You ought to say amen right there. I am not saying that you asked for it, but because of the breakdown, Chances are there never would have been a breakup. And you know that without a breakup, there would never be some makeup. Because breakup to makeup, that's all we do. First you love me, then you hate me. That's a game. You know the song. We, you, you had to go through some things in your life, and it was necessary. And, and you see, I want somebody watching this Easter Sunday morning. I want somebody celebrating this spirit of resurrection, recognize that it everything you've gone through and all the experiences that life has shown you, it happened, y'all, because it was necessary. It was necessary for you to fall on your knees. It was necessary for you to go through some struggle. It was necessary for you to get fired. It was necessary for you to get hired. Do never discount the beginning of small things because God has a bigger plan for your life and it is necessary. Necessary, necessary. Let me see if I can share this illustration with you. You may have heard it before. For a doctor, a physician was about to perform a, a surgery on his patient's ear. And what he had to explain to the patient is he told the patient, he says, look, I may hurt you, but I will not injure you. I've got to cut out the sickness before the well tissues begin to grow. Can I help you this Sunday morning? Because I want you to recognize that God is saying the very same thing to you and your soul. God is saying, I've got to cut out the sickness, the illness in your soul before the real healthy tissues will begin to grow. And oh, how that great physician, Jesus Christ himself, reminds us, our friends, and his word that we must forgive before we can be blessed. We must be stripped down before he can can build us up. We must lose life before we can gain life. It's necessary. D Jesus tells us we must risk embarrassment, y'all, before we can experience community celebration. We must go through trials before we get to triumph. We must go through pain on our way to joy. Why? Because it's necessary. It's necessary. Come here, Solomon. Help us understand what you wrote in the book of Ecclesiastes. But did you not say the race is not to the swift, nor the battle to the strong, nor does food come to the wise, nor does wealth to the brilliant, but time and chance brings them all. It's necessary. Talk to me, David. But did you not say in Psalm 30, for his anger is built for a moment, but his favor is a lifetime. You know the rest of it. Weep and may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. It's necessary. Will you put right there in the chat box, it's necessary. It's necessary for me to go through what I go through in order for me to get the testimony that I have. It's necessary for me to come up the rough side of the mountain so when I get up to the top, I can pull somebody else along the way. It's necessary for me to go through this thing that I'm in right now, this pandemic, this, this time of, of going through a uh, an un new, unusual new normal. I've got to go through it because God has a bigger plan for my life and God has a bigger plan for my future and I've got to humble myself now because it's necessary. 
necessary, necessary, what's necessary, absolutely needed, necessary, what is necessary, logically unavoidable, necessary, what is necessary, inevitable, a part of nature, what is necessary, cannot be denied without, what you saying preacher, it's necessary for you to go back to school, it's necessary for you to get another job, it's necessary for you to save some money, it's necessary for you to put some green money in a black bank, it's necessary for you to register to vote. It's necessary for you to serve on jury duty. It's necessary for you to hold up the bloodstained banner of Jesus Christ. Whatever God puts in front of you, my friends, don't discount the beginning of small, the, the, they say the smallness of beginning things. You have to recognize it's necessary. Necessary, necessary. You see, to fully understand the story of resurrection, we need to know the elements of an insurrection. To, to completely grasp the importance of new life, my friends, try, if you will, to comprehend the tragedy of a sacrificial death. For on this Easter Sunday, I have to mention Judas, y'all, in order to introduce some folk to Jesus. But please don't discount my message about Jesus while I explain to you how necessary it is for us to face the Judases of our life. Somebody say, come on, preach, Reverend. That's what I needed to hear because the text helps us realize, y'all, until you face the Judases in your life, you will never experience the resurrection of Almighty God. The text is tailored to teach us, y'all, that until we deal with the folk who stab us in the back, we'll never be able to lift up our hands and say, Lord, have your way. For according to the gospel, before Resurrection Sunday, Jesus was arrested on Thursday. Where? And praying in the Garden of Gethsemane. While he was telling Peter and the disciples not to fall asleep, you got to understand Judas and the Roman soldiers and the chief priests and the elders were coming to arrest Jesus from his prayer meeting. And since the Roman soldiers apparently didn't know what Jesus looked like, Judas had already hooked up the gig, y'all, so that he would get paid, shall we say, for identifying the Son of Almighty God. The arrest of Jesus was predicted, y'all, and it was prearranged by Judas. Can you say necessary? It was necessary for Judas to carry out his act so that we could have a resurrection Sunday called Easter. Jesus, stay with me now allowed himself to be arrested. The prophet Isaiah has said that he would be like a sheep before the shears. The picture that you got to get into your mind, y'all, is that Jesus, in the midst of being betrayed, portrayed humility. Okay, you missed it. Jesus, in the midst of being betrayed, he portrayed humility. And friends, that's one of the first points I want to make in this sermon today, is that it's necessary for all of us to learn some lessons about betrayal. It's necessary for all of us to understand that in order for us to get to the place God wants us to be, we have to go through some trials and tribulations, and one of those trials is dealing with betrayal. I don't know if you want to go ahead and type right there in the chat box, but you need to let somebody know, I need to get this lesson on betrayal because somebody needs to understand that I don't care what you say about me, what you do to me, how you treat me, I'm still a child of Almighty God. I don't care how bad you talk about me, how bad you put me down, I'm still a loving child of Almighty God. It's necessary, my friends, for you to learn how to deal with folk who, who, who do you wrong. It, it's necessary for you, my friends, to learn how to deal with folk who stab you in the back. It's necessary, my friends, for you to learn how to deal with folk who may sell you out. It's necessary, my friends, for you to learn how to deal with folk who betray you because of their jealousy. It's necessary, it's necessary. Judas, Judas, y'all, is in the crowd. Judas, y'all, is one of the 12. Judas, y'all, was there with him when he was, he, he was doing all these great miracles. But don't miss this. Judas, even though he was chosen by Jesus, it was necessary for Judas to do what he did so you and I can see that we got some Judases <laughs> in us, around us, before us, might be laying in the bed right with us right now. I ain't hating. I'm just, I don't know where you're watching this. But you got to, if you're watching it beside a Judas, one of y'all need to get up and move right now. Amen. 
G J Judas, y'all, walked so close with Jesus that, that Jesus even made him the treasurer. Judas, y'all, received the same teachings as the other 11. Judas, y'all, he, he walked with Jesus as the others, yet his relationship with Jesus did not change his life. And I don't know who I'm talking to on this Easter, but I want to warn you is that if you've been walking with the Lord and God has not changed your life, then you might need to change your step a little bit closer with the Savior. You've been walking with the Lord and God's power has not come upon you. You, may need, you might need to ask God, God, give me strength. Let less of me be seen and more of you come a part of me. You see, you have to realize is that yet the relationship with Jesus was strong with Judas. Judas was not changed because he was in the company of Jesus. And, and the, the, the text, y'all, it helps us realize is that when you have that broken relationship with the Lord, broken relationship with God, broken relationship with our Savior, that's nothing but sin. S I N sin. S I anything that separates you from Almighty God is sin. Betrayal, y'all, is sin sin. Betrayal, y'all, will cause you to forget the good that other folk do in your life. Betrayal, y'all, will cause you to forget the kindness that people have extended to you. Betrayal, y'all, will cause you to forget the generosity and the peace that God gives us. Judas, y'all, got selective amnesia and forgot all those things that God had done for him and he betrayed him, betrayed him. Judas brought with him soldiers and swords and clubs to arrest Jesus. Judas brought with him weapons, weapons of mass destruction, weapons of, 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 of insurrection, weapons where they would break down the, the, the barricades and break down windows and go through the halls of Congress. Okay, I mean to say that, but, but, but weapons, y'all, when they were going to overturn things and Judas says, time out, my brothers, you don't need to do that. Just do what you've been called to do. What is the lesson? The lesson is, my friends, is that we have to be careful of the betrayals. I've heard heard it said before, and I quote Dr. Wright when he said it to us. He says, everything your color is not your friend. And everything not your kind might not be your enemy. You've got to be careful, wise as serpents and humble as doves for the betrayal. That, that's the first lesson I want you to get from this text. But I want you to also recognize the second lesson that Jesus teaches us on this encounter with Jesus. Judas is in verse 50. Verse 50 says, and Jesus said to him, friends, do what you come to do. Then the Bible says, Pastor Lance, and they came and laid hands on Jesus and seized him. Y'all, Jesus right now is a good example of humility. And the lesson I want us to learn here on this Easter Sunday is on our way to celebrating resurrection, on our way from betrayal to resurrection, we have to have a heart of humility. Can you type humility right there in the chat box? Matter of fact, can you type humble if you don't know how to spell humility? Let, let somebody know. Put an H right there. I need some humility about I need to be humble I need to stop bragging about myself I need to stop talking about myself I need to stop doing you notice what I'm using that first person singular pronoun I, I anytime you got too many eyes in your sentences you are full of pride anytime it's about me myself and I that's not of God Jesus explains humility here y'all Jesus talks to Judas and refers to Judas as a friend as a friend, Minister Donna, using the Greek word that refers to, uh, 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 comes, from, comes from sincere and commonality. The word speaks of an associate, the people have things in common. Jesus says, friend, do what you come to do. This, this does not mean, now don't miss this, it does not mean that Judas is a friend of Jesus. It does imply that Jesus is a friend of Judas. 
I said something you need to write down and say that again. Here it is. It doesn't mean that Jesus is saying, Judas, you are my friend. What he's saying to Judas is, I am your friend. And somebody watching on this Sunday morning need to recognize that in the midst of whatever it is you may find yourself in, Jesus is still saying, I'm your friend. In the midst of any kind of confusion or any kind of backsliding or any kind of craziness going on in your life, Jesus, our Lord and Savior, is still saying, I am your friend. What? What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to wear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. A friend, a friend, a friend. Jesus told Judas to do what he came to do. And, and, and notice what the text says. The soldiers laid hands on Jesus. Now, don't miss this because what it shows us here, Dr. Monroe, is that Jesus, although he was a friend of Judas, Jesus had some friends with him. I like that. I like that because Peter is right there strapped and ready to go. Now, I'm not saying that you got to be that way. I'm not to saying you got to carry something on you. But I tell you, when you go out to fight among the wolves, you better have somebody who knows some street in them. Can I just, can you, if you got some street in you, will you just type street right there in the chat box? If, if, if you got some ghetto in you right there, matter of fact, I need some ghetto Christians rolling with me because I'm going to the ghetto. Yeah, Santa Claus is in the ghetto, but Jesus Christ lives in the ghetto. I need some ghetto folk with me like Peter because the Bible says when they laid hands on Jesus. Come on, help me. They laid hands on him. Peter took out his switchblade, took out that jackknife and swiped my homeboy Malchus' ear off. Now understand, understand, Jesus gave him a warning. Peter, Peter, Peter. P Peter, Peter, Peter. Peter, bro man, Peter, it don't take all that. <laughs> you know, there's some folk, some folk, <laughs> every now and then, you're going to have to show them that you for real. So, some folk every now and then ain't going to believe it until you take out your sword, which is the word of Almighty God. You see, 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 y'all, y'all get ready to write me up on that. Yes, 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 yes. But, 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 but Peter cut the man's ear off because Peter had already said upon, Jesus said upon this rock, Peter says, you are the Christ. Peter had already identified him as a Messiah. Y'all, that ain't nothing but some love talking right there. When God has been so important in your life and done so much for you, you ain't going to let no devil in hell or on earth talk about your Jesus. When God had lifted you up and turned you around, you ought to be like Peter and say boldly, that is my God. When God answers your prayer and puts you on a solid rock, somebody ought to type right there in the chat box, I I'm glad he saved me. I'm glad he delivered me. I'm glad he lifted me up. Yeah, I got some Peter in me. Yes, I got some ghetto in me. Thank God he ain't through with me yet. But I thank God right now that I got, okay, okay, let me get fast, fast forward because I don't want you to miss the, the blessing that Jesus does in this, in this attack for our old boy Peter. The Bible says that, that he picks up the ear, Brother L, picks up the ear puts it back on Melka's ear and he's healed instantly. Now, now, I don't care what you've seen on television, but if I was to ever see that in real life, if I ever doubted Jesus before, when I see my Lord pick up a man's ear off the ground and put it back on his head and the ear still work, y'all, that's enough to make me believe. Somebody need to see what I'm saying today because God has shown you some ear miracles in your life, and that should have been enough to make you believe. Somebody this time last year had an IV in this psalm and some monitors on your chest, and you are now sitting at home watching this Easter service. You, you ought to give God praise. That's an ear miracle right there. Somebody was homeless, and now you got not just your 
rented place, but you own a place. That's some ear working miracles there. Somebody was unemployed and now you are, you are not unemployed all non-void, but you got a paycheck and a stimulus. You ought to give God praise right there because you know that's an ear working miracle. Somebody ought to give God praise in the chat box in your home right now for the ear working miracle that God does in your life. The text lets it be known, y'all, is that as Jesus says, do what you're supposed to do. He practices humility. Humility. But the last point I want to make from this text, and I don't want you to miss it, y'all, is that Jesus now makes a response. A response he makes, y'all, comes to us from verse 56 of the text. For the Bible says, but all of this took place to fulfill the scriptures of the prophets. In essence, the Bible is saying it was necessary for all these things to take place to fulfill what the, what, the, what the scriptures were all about. Somebody who's been struggling with this thing called Christianity or struggling with your faith, trying to put it back together, I want you to know that every struggle that you have gone through, it was necessary for you to get to this place called belief right now. I want you to know your betrayal. I want you to know your humility. Humility, and now your response is all y'all happened because it was necessary. Now, now I got to tie in what the scripture of Pastor Lanson as she read it to us, our, our Easter morning scripture. For the Bible says early on Sunday morning, there a new day was dawning, and Mary Mary was at the tomb. Okay, not the Mary Mary you know, but the Mary Mary Magdalene and, and the other Mary went to visit the tomb. And the first response is that they went. Recognize when you go from betrayal to resurrection, you got to have some went spirit inside of you. And the went spirit means I ain't staying where I am, but I'm going where God is calling. They went to see where Jesus was. They went to the tomb to pay their respect. They went there, y'all, and was met by Almighty God. The text then says that the angel spoke to them and said, don't be afraid, or as we say in the hood, don't be scared, because God lives right now. Somebody Somebody watching on this Easter Sunday morning, you need to get some spirit inside of you and stop having the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a strong mind. The response, y'all, it says, go quick and tell the disciples. You said I wasn't going to tell nobody, but I just couldn't keep it to myself. All oh, what God has done for me. You need to respond by going to tell somebody. The Bible says the women ran. It said they didn't walk. It said they didn't jog. It says they ran with expediency. They ran with the quickness. They ran with some, some excitement about themselves. When God does something in your life, that ain't time for you to sit on your blessed assurance and let somebody else get the praise and the shout. You need to stand to your feet and give God some glory. Stand on your feet and give God some praise. Put them holy hands together and put some shouting in your legs and give God a hallelujah. The Bible says that they, 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 they didn't rush to give the disciples the angel's message, which means you got to tell the truth all the time. Tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. And here's the last thing right here that made me almost shout as pastor was reading the scripture. It says they ran to him, they grasped his feet, and they worshiped him. Whew. You see, they ran to the one who was betrayed. They grabbed the feet that were, that were nailed to the cross, and they worshiped him. Okay, they didn't get it. The Bible says is that the one that was stabbed in the back, the one that was beaten, the one that had the crown of thorns on his head, they ran to him. They recognized this is the one that died for my sin. This is the one that got up from the grave. This is the one that I want to live for. They ran to him. They grasped his feet, meaning they recognized if I could just touch the small part of him, I know I can be healed. If I can just get in the shadow where he stepped, I know my life's going to be made better. If I 
can just get around the place where he is, I know I can be a more complete person. And y'all, here it is. If we was in the house, somebody would be shouting right now and running up and down the aisle because the Bible says, and then they worship. The Bible says, then they worship. The Bible says, and then they worship. And wherever you may be right now watching this or listening to this sermon, I want you to worship God. I want you to thank God. I want you to praise God. I want you to honor God. I want you to give hallelujahs to God. Because if you recognize what betrayal started and it leads you to a resurrection, that's time to worship. That's time to glorify. And that's time to magnify our Lord. Here, here, here's your invitation today on this Easter Sunday as we have come through Holy Week, as we have come through the season of Lent, and now we got a whole new month. April, April is before us. Spring is upon us. Resurrection is in the air. I invite you right now to receive an invitation to start anew, to start afresh. I invite you right now to, to let this day, Easter Sunday, be a a time for you to say, Father, I stretch my hands to you. No other help I know. I invite you on this Easter Sunday to let go of all those things that may have been holding you back in the first quarter of the year and realize that God has something for me. It's been a plum pleasing pleasure and a privilege to be working with you. Happy Easter, Pastor. Happy Easter. All right. Y'all have a wonderful day. God bless you. We'll see you next week. Thank <laughs> you.